not testing. One, two, three. Not testing, not testing. Okay, we have completed chapter one last week. Now we go into chapter two. Chapter two will be <clears throat> answering question for your learning outcomes. Number one, describe atomic and crystal structure for the material. Huh? And this chapter will be in your test one question. So chapter two, we will look into atom. Which is we need to call a little bit from your chemi uh, chemistry and um, pay your attention to periodic table, how to read periodic table, because you will see uh, one attachment or appendix in your question one and uh, sorry, in your test one and also your final exam. Huh? Okay, so we we'll look into electronic structure. Uh, which will tell you whether this material is a uh, metal, a metallic material, no metallic material, uh, and so on. Then later we look at into the force. There's some calculation there for calculate the force between two atom or two molecule, and then some bonding. Based on your answer, you tell me whether this is a covalent bond, single bond, double bond, and so on. Um, this chapter is more on chemistry. Yeah? Okay. Learning objective. You, you read lah. Okay. So first we look into atomic structure. So some history. Who invented or who discovery there is a, a structure in atoms? Uh, someone called Democritus. Yeah? He discovered that um actually our material you material consists of arrangement of something and he named the something as atom right okay so this is uh, the first table for today um particles you can break into the structure you will see it as you learn in your chemistry you will see electron proton and neutron and some value there so this one, uh, I don't expect you to uh, memorize or remember. Um, you will see it in your question paper, right? And uh, this column chart also, um, as we go deeper and deeper, you will also memorize by doing the exercise. It's a, it's a standard value, 1.6, 10 power negative 9 in column charge, uh, in column charge. Uh, electron is negative charge, proton is positive charge, and positive negative will try to attract each other, right? And if you put two same charge, they will repel each other. Right? This is what you learn in your physics and also chemistry. All right, now um, you will see atomic model. What mean by atom atomic model? So if the question asks you to draw or sketch an atomic model means you need to draw uh, the, where is the nucleus, where is the proton, where is the uh, nucleus proton, and then the electron, okay? So uh, in reality, uh, you will see nucleus is at the center, and if you zoom in the nucleus here, you will see proton and neutron in the center. And then the electron is orbiting outside. This at atomic model is simplified model, uh, simplified model, uh, because uh, with the recent uh, advanced technology, we managed to observe the behavior of atom, right? Um, so it no longer, in the real case, it no longer in this form, but it was in the cloud base, right? So the electron will move uh, in the cloud, base where it will fracture, you will see a donut shape, something like donut, lah. right? So this is a hydrogen atom under uh, advanced microscope. So you see uh, this is a nucleus and this is the first layer of uh, electron. Uh, uh, you can say this one is a, 
um, nucleus also. Uh, and you see the first orbit of uh, hydrogen, the electron is uh, moving along this, this, this ring. Huh? Okay, so in fact, somebody play with atoms and uh, make a short movie. Huh? IBM, they're able to play with uh, atoms. This is a small atom. All these uh, small, small round shape is atom. So IBM managed to record a movement of atom. So this short movie also tell you that uh, we already come to a, a space or era that we can control atoms. So atomic structures is fall under quantum mechanics. Um, you can even take one, if you go into a master degree, you deal with chemistry, there will be one specific chapter named quantum mechanics. So this is the first atomic structure. Uh, because this structure uh, developed by Bohr's, so we call it Bohr's atom model. So what I mean by Bohr's atom models? If the question asks you sketch a Bohr atom models, what they expected, we expect you to able to draw where is the nucleus, where is the proton, uh, where is the electron, right? So at the center, you have a nucleus, and then you have an orbit in red color. Of course, in, in exam, we just draw a circle. The green color circle here is uh, electron, right? So based on these ball models, sometimes the question asks you, predict this element. I give you the ball model. You predict this one based on periodic table. Right. So this is a nucleus, and this is a, you count how many nucleus it have, and then there's there's two nucleus outside. So you count one, two, and then this one is six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight. So two, eight, and two. How many? Twelve, huh? So we have uh, twelve electron and three orbit. So how do you read this element from periodic table? So you know that uh, this is your orbit number, right? So this one you count, you have three, one, two, three. So orbit one, orbit two, orbit three. So it fall within this region. And then, uh, You know that uh, this is uh, two atom outside the, the the there's a two electron outside the outer layer. 
So what does this mean? This one, you have one electron outside. This one, you have two electron outside. This one, you have three electron outside and so on. This one, this one, this one, and so on. Okay, so the, the most you can fit outside is eight. Huh? Electron eight, which is called stable state. So you have all the stable element on the uh, column number eight on your periodic table. Okay, so based on this Bose diagram or Bose model, this element inside periodic table is somewhere here. Of course, the one that I draw on whiteboard is not on scale, but the concept is there. Understand? First, you count how many orbit you have. So you, you drop from the top until the bottom. Orbit 1, orbit 2, orbit 3, and so on. Then you count how many uh, electrons outside. So if it's 2, then you go to row, uh, column number 2. If it's 1, then you go to 1. And so on. Okay, so this is the uh, first... Uh, the first diagram that, that uh, might come out in your test or in your finance. Right? Right. To ask you to predict or ask you to draw the boss atoms model. Let's say I give you some, I give you one element inside. Let's say I ask you to draw this element. I, I give you a, a very simple uh, periodic table. I mark this is element A. Sketch ball models for element A. Uh, so you, you base on this, this structure and then you draw. Okay, this is called balls model. Right. So again, the rest you can read. Lah. Just explain just now. Next, we will go into some uh, calculation. So on the periodic table, you'll see some numbers inside that. You'll see a number on top and some number here. Sometimes you see some somewhere here. First calculation, uh, first uh, numbers for calculation, we call it atomic number. So atomic number tell you number of protons you have, which is a positive charge you have. And this proton, again, just, just now based on the atomic structure model just now. Um, proton is stay with the nucleus with the nucleus all right and it's positive charge a normal atom that's stable will always have the same electron number of electron based on number of protons uh, we, we, that one is for the sta stabilized element eh? if it's in charges positive negative then something different between the electron proton won't change Proton won't change because proton is inside the nucleus. You want to extract proton is very, very hard. All right. So uh, something that can change whether it's positive or negative charge is on the electron. Something is outside. Okay, first is atomic number. Then at the bottom of the periodic table, you will see some numbers. So for example, carbon element, you will see 12.001. What does it mean? It means AMU, atomic mass unit, right? So it's in gram. It's in gram, huh? Sorry, not in. Uh, when I say gram, means if you look at the periodic table, twelve point zero zero one means one mole of the element. In chemistry, you know more, right? So one more means you have a certain numbers of molecule or atom inside it. Six more something, 10 power 23 atoms. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, mass number A, or we name it A, mass number is a sum of proton and neutron. Okay. So uh, sometimes in chemistry, you will see 
carbon element. This is the carbon element. Mass number, it gives you 12. Atomic number, 6. In this, uh, this one is uh, normally you tell you what is the number of uh, electron, uh, but normally uh, if you see two numbers, means on the top one is mass number, bottom one is atomic number, based on the arrangement of number. Uh. Okay, so if you see two number at the side, on the top one is mass number. Mass number means proton, uh, proton plus neutron. Bottom one is your protons. Okay. So we have introduced you uh, three definitions just now. Huh? Mass number, uh, atomic number, and uh, AP, uh, AMU. So if uh, the two elements, they name as uh, isotope family, it means that they have the same protons number. What, what does it mean? So, for example, hydrogen. Hydrogen, you have uh, one uh, electron outside. However, they are isotope of hydrogen. For example, what you see on the screen here, you have protium, you have uh, deuterium, you have titanium. The differences is, uh, you see the number of uh, proton is, different. Proton and neutron is different inside there. Okay. So the keyword for isotope is that they have the same number of protons. P is inside there. How, how this, uh, how this uh, slides help you? Um, Earlier, I tell you how we design the question. Normally, question will have three parts for degree courses. First one will be on definition or diagram. Then you do calculation. B, calculation. C is answering why. How, what? Okay. Uh, so meaning, uh, if your diagram sometimes you draw wrong, it will it will snowball to section B and section C. Right. So these slides here on the screen here normally appeared in uh, section A. We we'll ask you give some example of isotrop. Give an example of isotrop. Uh, isotrop. Uh, and explain what is uh, isotopes. It's normally appeared here. Then calculation later, you ask you to do some calculation for the forces, ripple, uh, and so on. All right. So you will see uh, the way you write in chemi chemistry form. For protium, you have H11. Uh, deuterium, you have H21. Titanium, you have 3, 1. Again, on the top, if you see two numbers, on the element, on the top is mass number. On the bottom is atomic number, which is proton. Again, proton will tell you how many numbers of electron outside the orbit, the, the, the outer orbit. Huh? Although the bottom one, number of proton is, uh, tell you number of proton, proton means positive charge, but it also means tell you that for a stabilized atom, it will equal to the number of electrons you have. Okay. So we can also do a calculation, right? If I if I give you the this number for example, so you have the mass number, you can predict number of new neutron inside there, right? Uh, you take this one minus this one. Okay, take this one minus this one. The top minus bottom, you get number of neutron. Neutron it doesn't have any charges, but it does tell you how many uh, elements of neutron is there. 
Okay. So AMU, just now we mentioned AMU, atomic mass. It just means that it refer to a carbon element uh, when it comes to uh, calculate. Huh? Okay. So recall that you learned something called Avogadro number in your chemistry. This is important throughout this module. Number of Avogadro won't be given in the test or final exam. We assume you already know what is number of Avogadro. Okay. So Amo Avogadro means one mole of that element, you have 6.02 10 power uh, uh, post, uh, 23 in that one mole of uh, container. Right. So again, this number of Gavado, Gavado, Avogadro number won't be given in the assessment, right? Okay. This one I already elaborated. Huh? So meaning, the number below the periodic table, you'll see one mass there. So for example, on the periodic table, you see there's a number there, that number, for example, the one I see on the screen here, carbon element, 12.011 gram will equal to one mole of carbon. If you want to get one mole of carbon, you get 12.01, you get one mole. And 12.011 means also you'll get number of Avogadro uh, atoms or element for that element okay okay the rest you read huh? So uh, some statement here. So basically the, the concept is the same. It just that sometime in a question, we will rephrase the meanings for you. Sometime we ask you to define in one atom, uh, how many atomic mass it have. Or in one more of that element, uh, you know the number of uh, atoms with its number of apocado. 6.02 10 power, uh, power 23. So here, how you know how many grams, you refer to the bottom of the uh, chart there. So normally here, if you look into periodic table, there's a number below the element. Okay, the rest you read. Huh? Some, they use average relative atomic, but it's still same, same meaning. Just that some, some textbook they use a longer uh, descriptive uh, terms for you. Uh, okay, let's do one exercise. This exercise is your tutorial question number 11. So you're given a scenario here. So um, it gives you isotopes of uh, ferrum. Just now, before this, you were given the isotope of hydrogen. Now you have a sam second sample, a second example of isotope. Huh? So, uh, so they, they, there's no reason why you cannot answer, give example of isotope. This is second example. Huh? So for ion Fe, you have a uh, isotope here. So Fe 56, Fe 54, Fe 57, Fe 58. And it gives you some percentage there, right? With atomic mass 55.934 AMU and so on. So you have three, uh, four set of number. So what does the question ask you? It asks you to find the average atomic mass for this element. So how do you find? First, give it all. Uh, so if you add the percentage here, means in, uh, in the forums uh, isotope, uh, forum 56 consists of 
uh, 91 point something in the isotope. Uh, Ferrum 58 consists of 0.28% of the whole isotope. So if you add the percentage, you get 100%. You want to get the average atomic mass for ferrum because uh, ion have isotopes. So you try to find the average value for your calculation. So what you do, you take this percentage, 91.754, multiply by the weight, this one, the percentage multiplied by this one, percentage multiplied by this one, percentage multiplied by this one, and you plus the numbers, you divide 100%. Then you get number. So 55.8 AMU is the mass for one forum atom in the unit of AMU. Make sense for you? Yeah? Ah. This is the first equation for today, eh? uh, first simple uh, today. Uh, for engineering, uh, engineering material, we don't have, we just use a simple mathematics, but the concept you have to be uh, sharp, you have to be very clear of the definition. Okay. Then the next question asks you to find what is the relative atomic mass of the ferrum or ion. Huh? So relative atomic mass actually is the same. So you use back the section A, the answer is 58.849. So uh, of course this one, if you calculate, there is a decimal place behind it. So you'll get 58.849 grams. For average atomic mass for ferrum. Okay. Any questions so far? Good. Everyone good? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you will see this number. You see this number on the periodic table. Right. Uh, if can, you download the tutorial later. Huh? So this is called periodic table. The one you see in the chapter one is a, is a simplified version. So this one you will see in your final exam and your test one, or even test two. Okay, so this is a very straightforward uh, periodic table. How do you read? Based on the color and tone of the color, it will tell you what is that material? Unless you're colorblind, if you're colorblind, tell me, right? So of course, uh, but if you're colorblind also, you'll tell the, the tone, the different tone. Huh? You're able to tell a different tone. So you have metals, so you will see the gray color. Those highlighted in gray color, they are metals. Um, metals in transition is the this one in the middle one. So if you see the element between the two big column here, this is a transition. It means they can change uh, sometime from metal to uh, non-metal or the shape of the structures will change because they, 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 the nature of that element also. Okay, so somebody, uh, this one element over here, you'll learn later. Of course, uh, also part of this module also. Then, uh, metalloid and non-metals and so on. This is all these are uh, non-metals in uh, light blue, non-metals. Uh, interestingly, uh, hydrogen is a non-metal. So. Hydrogen is a non-metal. Although it, it falls into the number one here, right? The rest you read. So you'll see that just now the exercise will tell you what is the average AMU there, 55.85. So all these numbers, uh, the element you see on the periodic table, they will sure have isotopes. 
so they collect the isotopes, they analyze it, and then they calculate, and then they found one average value there. So this one is the value that you use for your calculation. It's a simplified uh, value that speed up your calculation. But if you're in the material science, then this is just a starting point for you to calculate. Uh, you need to further analyze the isotope, then only you can find the answer. Right? Okay. Then the next question back to example one. How many atoms are there in 55.849 gram? Means it will tell you to recap what is the number of Avogadro. Because this number, 55.849 gram, is one more. So one more, you have 6.02 10 power 23. Eh? So uh, just before I forget, uh, uh, for this module, number of decimal minimum 2, maximum 3 eh? in your calculation. Minimum 2 decimal place, maximum 3 decimal place. Right. And the unit is important. So normally the max percentage will be 50% for the numbers, 50% for the unit. So if the if the if the marks for the answer is uh, let's say four marks, so this is two marks for your numbers, two marks for your unit. So if you forget to write your unit, uh, automatic discount 50% from the answer. So how many atoms for one gram of how many atoms for one gram of atom? You have one more, you have 55 gram, you have 6.02 10 power, 10 power 23 atoms. It asks you to find one gram of uh, forum. How many atoms is there? Right? So you do the calculation. Uh. You take this number. Number of Avogadro divided by the relative atomic mass, you get for one gram of ferrum, you get this atom. This is introduction of uh, calculation. Later, when you talk about um, composite or talk about um, mixing or fixing the metals component or alloying then this is very important. You need to know how many gram of element you need to add into the solution. The next one is, again, is just flip over to ask you, what is the mass in gram for one atom? All right, just take this one. Right now. So the next one is just uh, again ask uh, help you to refresh. What is the mass in gram in one AMA? So it's the same. Huh? So average atom you already found is fifty five point. 849, this one is from the isotope average. Then, just now you find one gram, you have how many atoms? Sorry, uh, one atom is how many grams? So part E, you define. So the mass in gram of one AMU means one atom's mass. You take 9.2 something minus 23 gram divided by 55 gram, you'll get 1.66 10 power negative 4 gram. So don't forget the negative sign. Huh? Uh, negative sign will be the careless mistakes that might happen in your answer. Sometimes you forget the negative sign. Okay, makes sense. So this is, uh, again, this is a tutorial question you won't see in your test one and final exam. 
we will re-engineer or reverse the question. The question will give you maybe sometime in mass in gram of one AMU, it asks you to calculate the end results. Uh, okay. All right. So I think, uh, yeah, we stop here. Uh, we have a short break. Uh, 10 minutes, huh? We continue 855. Lah.